What's good, everybody? We got a special video today. These regular guys challenged an NBA player and instantly regretted it. I tell you guys right now from experience, I have done this. I challenged a, a two-time NBA champion, center, weighing more than 300 pounds, Glenn Davis, and I instantly regretted it. The guys will know, look at my main channel, y'all. The, uh, the time I went to the chiropractor. Yeah. He fucked me up. But! We got a video right here. Let's go get to it. You know, under the right circumstances, if I maxed out all of my abilities and put all my efforts into this sport, I think I could play in the league. Regardless of how unrealistic this is, I'm sure we've all had this thought before. We all love the Man, game. And I don't know how many the times I heard the stories, y'all, about a lot of NBA players. They always say, bro, like, there's NBA players out there. Well, I say NBA. There is people with skill cases with better skills than NBA players, bro. You know? Like, it's a lot about who you know. If you're not the best talent, you know? It's Slow. crazy. But for 99.9% of us, this dream will forever remain just that. A dream. Because the gap between most of us and an NBA player is massive. In oh, fact, yeah. it could be difficult to understand just how much better the average NBA player is compared to the average Joe. Luckily for us, everyone's- Oh yeah, average player. High school varsity. Could, got community college players are nice. Like you're winning 24 hour fitness, bro, shit, they nice. Dog, we get to divisions, bro, like these dudes ain't missing shots, bro. Then the overseas, bro, we all do that one overseas guys who everybody like just respect when you come in the gym. Then it, you you better see ex NBA players, but you know, cause by the time they get down play basketball, they they got their own million dollar man to play their own basketball and they make their own runs. But it's crazy, man. It's crazy, bro. It's levels to this, bro. I respect it. These are the hoopers. Once in a while, an NBA player will take the time to show us just how much better they really are. A few weeks ago, a high school basketball player challenged Brian Scalabrini, former NBA player and basketball goat, to a game of one on one. The kid was confident, so confident that he even bet his own shoes on the game. Now, this kid looks to be a solid 6'2", 6'3", with some good skill and athleticism, probably better than the average high school hooper. On the other hand, Scalabrini is a 43-year-old who's been retired for nearly a decade. This Scalabrini used to be more thick, though. Like, he used to be way more bigger, bro. Did he play center? Okay, we go. Might be wrong, might be wrong. But there's levels to this. So on the first possession, the high schooler tries to create space with a little hezzy pull-up and gets stuffed. At this point, the game was already over. Oh, hey. oh, 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 oh he played physical. Hey. Oh, he played physical. We get the, we, the game was already yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he started that pump fake put it in your chest, oh yeah, he tried to feel me. Oh yeah, it's grown man basketball right here. I like this. Oh, hey. I wouldn't have got 11 no. I wouldn't have got 11-0. And I wouldn't get a two-time champion. I don't think he got no rings. After what probably felt like the longest five minutes of the kid's life, Brian Scalabrini beat the high schooler 11 to 0. It wasn't even close. Now, I'm sure there's some clips of the kid getting more shots up on Brian, but his friends decided to only include the clips of Brian torching him. Now, Scal That's could have crazy. easily used his size on every possession, but to really make an example out of the young buck, he got into his bag instead. This isn't even fair. Keep in mind, Brian is a relatively out of shape 43 year old, nine years removed from the NBA. Brian wasn't even an average NBA player. No offense to the man, but when I tried to search up his stats on Basketball Reference, Brian was so low on the leaderboard that he didn't even come up. His name literally doesn't appear. What? So instead, I had to go over to the ESPN archives and dig through hundreds and hundreds of players until I finally found old Brian. Oh, I wouldn't have done that, but I went to the page for man, hit Control uh, S and put his name in there, bro. I would have put Scalabrini, and of course I would have Googled Scalabrini because that's a long ass name to know how to you know, spell it out on the last page of the league leaderboard. Out of 479 players in the NBA that season, Jeez. Brian ranked 464th. 
464th. In fact, in Brian's last season in the NBA, he scored just 32 points. In the season before, he scored just 20. And in the season before that, he scored 78. In fact, Brian scored less points in his entire 11 year NBA career than James Harden scored last season in the first 45 games of the season. In Scal's last season in the NBA, he was worse at scoring the ball than 97% of NBA players. And here he is, nine years later, shooting hoops in his spare time bro, and still absolutely room, smoking an above average hoop. Bro, you got, you got hit the weights, man. You see, he kept me going out looking like this right here, man. He got hit the weights, y'all, man. And, uh, duh, and I'm on it, 5, 11, 6 foot, whatever you want to call me, you know, depending on, you know, what, what I want to be called that day, you know, but this how I be winning games, bro, just because of muscle, because some of you guys just too lazy to hit the weight room, and not, and y'all think I'm just hitting the weight room just for basketball, there's tremendous benefits with this weight room, y'all, it's a cheat code in life, if you know, you know. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what I like to call perspective. <laughs> It's something that you need in order to grasp exactly where you stand in the world of sports. And yet it's something that a lot of sports fans lack. We all know that one guy that swears he would have went to the league if he didn't get injured or he got more playing time or if he was six inches taller. That's me saying that. I'm that one guy. But all jokes aside, sometimes we just need to get walked by real NBA talent to know exactly how good these guys are. Like in 2017, when a 22-year-old Fred Van Vliet went one-on-one -on -one against two other hoopers. Now, these other hoopers were far from average. One of them was Marcus Posley, a guard in the G League. Is. The other hooper was Jordan Poole, who is now a contributing I, I player on the name, Warriors, but, but at the time was an 18-year-old fresh out of high school as the 51st top prospect in the entire country. Two elite basketball players, one a professional in the G League, the other a top high school recruit with five inches on Van Vliet. Both of them far, far better than everyone at your local gym. Take a wild guess at how these one-on-ones went. Bro, Fred, we all know Fred nasty, bro. I did not disrespect Fred, man. That's Drake, man. Bro. I, I never forget how that boy torched uh, Curry in that finals round, boy. I'm to my giving Curry bucket. That boy wasn't missing. Well, I want him. Well, I want him, man. He, and he's still bucket to this day, bro. Just nice, bro. It's not even the quickest game, bro. Just, just his finesse is so nice. He know how to use his body. Damn. Woo, woo. It went pretty much exactly how you would expect. Van Vliet, going half speed, was still on another level. Just look at how easy he gets to his spots. Getting up shots like the defender isn't even there. In a Kings Court format, Poole finished with three, Posley finished with seven, and Van Vliet finished with 19, oh, and didn't even nice. break a sweat in the process. Look at this bucket here. Come on, dog. This man literally isn't even trying. Today, most fans know Van Vliet as a killer point guard with a championship and a 54 point performance under his belt. But back in 2017, Fred was hardly a rotational guy for the Raptors, averaging just eight minutes and three points per game. This guy is six feet tall on a good day, can hardly get playing time in the league, and here he is completely sleepwalking through two elite I'm basketball gonna, talents like it's nothing. Perspective. And I would like to say that for the most part, NBA players don't even give us average Joes the time of day. Only once in a blue moon do they bring their busy days to a halt to show some washed up hack just how delusional he is. But far more often, these pros don't even listen to the chatter. Well, all of them but Scalabrini. Brian doesn't just listen to us average Joes, he makes a show about it and proceeds to embarrass our fellow average brethren for the world to see. Seriously, this was a real thing. This actually happened. In 2013, on a show called The Scallenge, which is pretty much the greatest name for a show in the history of shows, Brian Scalabrini didn't just play random guys one-on-one -on -one and take their shoes. This man handpicked contestants via video submissions, brought them onto his own show, created apparel and merchandise for the show, and even had his own sideline crew to call the action. This is absolute peak, peak all-time pettiness from Scal. And I love it. I respect this though, bro. I, yeah, this is a respect. Imagine sending a video to a former NBA player, calling him out on his game and saying you could beat him and probably assuming you won't actually get picked. 
and then next thing you know, you're suited up in a gym checking the ball up to a six foot eight NBA champion. Now, some of these video submissions were complete satire, but for every guy trying to crack some jokes, there was a hooper who actually felt like he had a chance against Scal. The three contestants he chose were Matt Tomaszewski, Rich Morantis, and Jake Fay. Now, Mr. Tomaszewski wasn't your average hooper. Matt was a six foot eight inch forward who started at Syracuse just a year before this one-on-one. -on -one. The second challenger, Rich, was actually a really good hooper back in his day, a former D2 player and also a former pro in Australia. The last challenger, Jake Fay, well, Jake is the epitome of an average player who had nothing but what I assume are a few Red wow. League trophies in his submitted video that he literally did drills around. Three challengers, one Scalabrini, and a 0% probability that anyone stood a chance. Bro, Matt this Tomaszewski, crazy, bro. a graduate of Syracuse, where he played basketball. Bro, Rich when I play people on me one, I keep a trail with y'all, bro, man. I'm, I am about to go out there and play no... No dude out there I see out there doing 360 donks and shit like that, man. Who am I? I'm not about to look like a clown, bro. You know what I mean? Sheesh. It's a good size He's matchup. Nice, man. They're almost identical in physical appearance. I watched him in warm-ups. He can hit threes all day, but the question is, does he have the speed? Does he have the quickness to take on the vanilla Godzilla? Elbows oh, up. How about that? Use right. and oh, how about that? Positioning. Ooh. Bing. That's a nice spin move. And, and he goes back to the three. Oh, red. Oh! It's an interesting strategy. Hey! Sabrini, what a contest. Hey, seriously? <laughs> well, uh, that went about as terrible as I thought it would. Let's see how Jake did. Where I'm from, I'm called the Great White Hope. Because I wear hoop ear. <laughs> there ain't gonna be no hope. Oh, this guy's gonna suck. Oh, okay, well, that's not bad. Oh, All this right. This guy's decent. Wow. I think this guy might be a keeper. And he got his trophies All out? All around the trophies. Yeah. Scout, yeah. what do you think? No, it's decent. Good athlete. <laughs> it's a guy. We're going to pick this guy. I like it. Make sure you bring your trophies. This is the guy we want. Oh, no, he did. And he got fouled. Jake. Oh, that's just embarrassing. Oh! <sighs> I, I, I like oh, that. Oh, he did. Man. And he got like... fouled. Jake. Oh, that's just embarrassing. Oh! <sighs> yeah. There you go. Hit the weight, Ooh, Hit the there weight. There you go. Go for the dunk, baby. No! <sighs> Yeah, we'll jump right oh, in. As he predicted, as he wanted, Brian Scalabrini takes out Jake Faye. Like yeah, pretty much what I thought. Again, Rich, let's again, see man. what you can do. As much as I would have to guard him, he'd have to guard me. So you have chosen death. Bro, these are OP fadeaway shots. What you want me to do? Dirk the whiskey head ass, man. Then he top of the key with it. Oh, the you walk away with a shutout. What did you take from it? Well, I missed that first shot that I should have made. And after that, I just couldn't get the shot going. Really, it's kind of where it is. Okay, that was... You better get this dude some pops. This dude just whoop your ass, man. Oh, you so oh, you sour, you salty. You mean you get this dude beside you the props what he deserves, man? It's terrible. Breaking news: NBA players, even old, washed-up, retired ones, are way, way, way better than any of us. And I would like to say that after torching these three contestants, everyone's ego came back down to earth. But no, instead, and I'm not joking when I say this, the sideline crew decided to get in on the action and challenge Brian to a game of three on one. The sideline crew. <sighs> yes. Three below average middle aged men versus one former NBA player. Based on what you've seen so far, how exactly do y'all think this went down? Talking to himself again like a maniac. Whoa, why are you tripping like that? Oh. Man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. These. Bro, come on, man. One dude drive ice cream trucks. One dude a, a, is a librarian. And one, one dude, bro, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, a plumber? You know, shit, I would be him too, but I, I'm not. No, you'll never bro. I'm just saying, man. Like, like, oh, oh, oh. The 
fact he put up some shots up, bro, he got confident. <laughs> Top of the key. Well, I won't. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, I would really like to say that these guys put up a decent fight. But, uh, yeah. This is what happens when average Joes try to go against an NBA player. In fact, this is what happens when an average hooper, a former D1 player, and even a former overseas guy go against an NBA player. In the off chance that you ever get to actually play an elite talent on this level, it's just not gonna go well for you. So shout out to Brian, Fred, and any other NBA player who has taken time to scorch the normal guys for giving us perspective that we desperately need but often refuse to accept. Let me know in the comments below. And be honest, how well do you think you would do in a game of one-on-one -on -one against an NBA player? And even better, Trust me, y'all. I gonna ask a question for y'all, man. Not too good. Who exactly do you think you would have the best shot at beating? Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, until next time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. This beautiful video here, man. Real talk. See you guys in the video. We out of here. Everybody!